So we are live again now with Matthias. Matthias came on my, my radar uh, a few months ago uh, doing some really nifty hacks on WSL with the WSL kernel and Raspberry Pi. And uh, it's just been fun watching uh, what he does with us. Um, so we, we invited him on uh, to show us how he does it. Uh, and he's going to walk us through some tips and tricks on that. So thank you for joining us, uh, Matthias. And uh, you can take it from here. Thanks, Hayden. Thanks. Uh, thanks, guys, to attending for this uh, WSL Conf and go ahead with some tips and tricks for the Linux kernel for WSL too, right? Uh, the goal here of the talk is not show you or not teach you how to compile the kernel, right? But show some curiosities and some tips uh, for doing it. If you don't know me, I'm Matheus Castello, right? Uh, I work as embedded software engineer uh, on the fields of the embedded systems, more specifically on the ARM architecture, right? Uh, I have some contributions to the kernel Linux, but also in the fields of uh, embedded systems. I'm not a Microsoft guy, right? Uh, I'm, I'm coming from the Windows side because uh, we are... Um, make a transition between uh, the Windows CE uh, customers to the Linux and that assistance. And we are trying to make this transition more smooth, right? Um, and the WSL and, to, and using the Microsoft ecosystem with the WSL is uh, a good way uh, to do it. So it's because of it uh, that I'm on this world right, right now. And the WSL tour, have a, a very interesting uh, architecture. Role. So let's go ahead here with this subject. Um, as I said, the goal here is not uh, teach you guys how to compile the kernel for WSL. We are already have uh, good stuff, good blog posts uh, about it. I have one, the uh, Hayden have one, to uh, configure the KVM for uh, the WSL. And we have also uh, steps to configure and uh, compile the kernel. Uno have um, blog posts about it also. So uh, on the Microsoft GitHub for the WSL, we have some ba basic instructions right here. So we have good stuff, good documentation and how you can build and customize your kernel. What uh, the goal here of the talk is uh, show some curiosities and some tips uh, for the development, right? And also I have a YouTube channel and I have this video here uh, with the steps uh, from my blog post. So go to the YouTube and subscribe to the channel, uh, please. Okay, so. Let's go. First of all, let's understand what means uh, mainstream and downstream uh, repositories, right? We have these nomenclatures and these repositories in the Linux kernel world. The mainstream mean, means um, the repository, the Git repository with the kernel Linux source code that is maintained by the Linux storeboards uh, itself is where we have uh, the development cycle happen, right? Uh, the maintainers send the patches uh, to the mainstream uh, or the mainline uh, Git repository is where we have the release candidates. Right now, we have on the mainstream the uh, version 5.9 release candidate, the RC4, uh, right? And when we have a stable version, this um, we have a fork of the, the mainstream to a stable uh, repository, right? And also we have the long-term support repository. Right now, these two uh, repositories are maintained by the Greg Harkman and Sasha Levin. Sasha is also a kernel developer that works on the WSL and I preview for Microsoft. And we have the downstream Git repository. The downstream is the common way that manufacturers and vendors um, um, 
fork, uh, commonly fork the long-term support, long-term support from uh, the official kernel.org and make the changes that are specifically for a product. On the case of the WSL, we have the downstream repository here the, on the GitHub. The Microsoft slash WSL2 Linux kernel is the downstream uh, Git repository for the WSL. It is the uh, repository that the kernel Linux developers of Microsoft make the changes specifically uh, for the product for the uh, WSL, right? And um, a good practice is, okay, the vendor makes the fork from the long-term support, makes the changes, uh, found some bug fixes uh, and apply it and uh, include features and etc. So the good practice is to downstream, try, try to upstream these changes again and push back this uh, to mainstream. And the uh, kernel developers and Microsoft are doing a very good job uh, doing it from uh, trying to upstream now for mainstream. We have the majority of the pets, the majority of uh, the commits uh, and changes from the downstream already on, on the mainstream kernel, right? So to, to check this, the kernel developers of Microsoft are very smart. They, let me go here on my distro. Let, let, okay. Let's go here on my repository. I have a clone here of the, oops, of the WSL2 Linux kernel, right? And if we go to the uh, git log and grab by tag Microsoft, we can, share, we can see here at the commits, right? The changes that is specifically for the WSL and for the Hyper-V, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's a very smart way to check what is on the downstream that is not upstreamed yet. Uh, one example here is this Hyper-V support for free page reporting that is not upstreamed yet. But let me exemplify this here. I have... We have here a program, right? A simple C program that allocates memory, right? This ask for memory. We can see here on the task manager of the Windows as WSL, Linux, and Windows are running on top of the hypervisor, the hyperv. We are sharing the, the resources, right? The hardware resources. And the Linux kernel has a driver for asks uh, to hypervisor this memory, right? We need four gigabytes. We ask for the uh, four gigabytes. We can see the increase here. But when we have the free of this memory, right? The programs um, die here. We don't have this memory back. Okay? Oh, important. I can, I have to show you guys the version here of my kernel. It's a vanilla kernel, right? I get the release candidate for from Linux Torvalds uh, mainstream repository with no changes, right? And we can see here that I'm using the WSL conf uh, version uh, for the conference with no changes, right? The patch of the Unused um, memory is not applied, okay? So because of this, the kernel driver don't know how to tell to our provisor that the memory is free, right? But this don't block you to use a mainline uh, uh, kernel, right? It's working, but we don't have this feature. This memory that is used for Linux will never be free again for to Windows. But again, uh, this is does not block you because you can go through, uh, for example, the Linux kernel mail list, right? As I said, the Microsoft are making a very good job um, contributing to the, to the kernel Linux. So we have here uh, a kernel Linux developer from Microsoft trying to upstream uh, the patch of the free page reporting from the Hyper-V. So we can go through here and get this diff and apply it on our um, 
source code. So I already have it compiled here to not waste time. Let's load here. So now I will load a kernel that have the patch applied, right? The git diff patch, patch applied. Let's go run it. Okay, so we can go uh, city version right now. We can see I'm on the same version, the WSL conf uh, 5.9 version, release candidate 4. But you can see that we have a plus here at the end of my uh, string version. That means that is the version, is this version, right, with plus more something, right? I applied patch from uh, the Sunil uh, that solves the unused page re reporting, right? And let's again run our, our memo program. This will ask for four gigabytes. You can see it increase here. The, the Linux asking for hypervisor A, hey, I need more memory. It's allocated, we are taking a while and now the program dies. We are free now and we can see that now it's working, right? We are running the latest release candidate with the patch applied and with the feature applied, right? And this is very cool. Uh, other thing that I want to show you is, uh, for example, if you are doing this, if you need some feature that needs uh, a mainline kernel, right? And we need to apply something, we can check here on the Linux kernel main list, right? And also we can check for the lore at patchwork, the lore kernel.org, right? The patchwork and uh, filter by the kernel Linux developer or for the Hyper-V um, features and check here what is being uh, upstreamed by the Linux kernel uh, developers of the Microsofts. And test, apply it and test on your uh, WSL because this this is important. This is a way to contribute also because let me let me go to here. I have git log because on um, when we have the process of development, right? This the development cycle of the Linux kernel. We have the developers that are um, submitting features, right? Submitting uh, bug fixes and everything, but also makes part of the development cycle uh, the tests, right? So you can you can make part of the development testing and sending emails with the tag tested by, and will be uh, part of the development cycle, right? This is very cool. Go ahead, let's let's continue here. Okay, so let's enter on the tips, build tips. One is how, how we can uh, get the source code for the WSL kernel, right? Uh, as I said, we have the downstream and uh, mainstream source uh, repositories. We are also have the repositories for uh, the stable uh, versions, right? Here we can see the stable versions here on the kernel.org, right? We can see all the long-term versions, the end of life, the end of life of these versions, we can see here on the releases, right? Uh, you have this, this table here, you can see here the end of life of each of the long support, long-term support versions. And also here on the index page, we can see here this browse, right? If I want to use uh, the latest stable version, we can click here on browse and this will link to the uh, Git repository. I can clone this Git repository. Also for the long-term supports, I can go to uh, the browse here and clone this and compile and make my changes based on these uh, guys. Also, the downstream repository from Microsoft that have uh, these versions right now the for 19.5.4, and, and uh, right? It is recommended way, right? It clone from uh, uh, downstream or mainstream 
the uh, the hexers that have the features and that uh, fits our needs. Okay. Other way is uh, here on the GitHub we have on the downstream repository we have this feature here, the releases, right? And here on the releases, the Microsoft guys are making releases and making also this uh, source code zips, right? We have this source code zip. We can download the source code zip here and use uh, this specific version, right? From this specific tag, from this specific commit as base for your um, build, right? But I recommend you to download the downstream, right? You git clone the downstream kernel and make a checkout by tag or by commit to work with these uh, versions here, right? Okay. Config. This is um, the hard um, part of uh, the process, right? Make the, the configurations of the kernel, right? Which uh, features I need uh, to my kernel. We can use the make menu config. I will use uh, the post, the blog post from hiding here to show the the why, right? When we have a make menu config, we uh, we will have this uh, why here, right? We we have. Uh, the options, we can select these options in a more user-friendly uh, way to select what will be included, w w which models will be included on your uh, build, right? Other way is make passing the kconfig config, that is the uh, dot config for uh, your build, right? Here on the downstream uh, repository, the Microsoft uh, put here a Microsoft folder, right? Passing and, and updating here this uh, config WSL that is the .config file for a specific version of uh, the kernel. Okay, so you can use this. This is already uh, uh, ready for uh, the needs of the WSL. So we can pass this file here uh, to the kconfig config property from the make, and this will work. The, bro the problem uh, begins when we are uh, uh, building a, a kernel from a version that is different from the version from the file. We can see here on the begin, on the he.file, that we have here automatically generated file for this version, right? If you try to use it uh, in a different version, this will not work, right? We will have some, uh, the, the, the build system will ask us to make some decisions for what uh, configurations will be included uh, or not, right? So the recommend way to work with uh, the development uh, cycle of the kernel Linux is to make a def config, right? Because the def config will uh, make this automatically, right? This will uh, choose for you uh, the default options for each uh, config, right? Let me show here how you can do it. For example, here on the downstream uh, kernel, we can use the Microsoft uh, config WSL, for example, as base, right? Let's uh, let's copy here. Let's copy this file here. But we have to copy uh, this file to this folder, the arc x86 uh, configs. And another tip: this file have to end with underline dev config, right? Okay, so now let's go to arc x86 configs wsl dev config. Oh. Ah. So we have now the wsl dev config here inside the config folders, right? And now we can go to uh, 
the folder, the root folder of the repository of the source code in, and do a make WSL dev config. Okay. This will uh, make the configuration automatically uh, for us, right? With the default uh, options based on uh, the options that are pre uh, configured from the latest versions. So if you need to uh, include something or change something, we can go through the WSL dev, dev config file and make these uh, changes, right? And this, this is uh, the most easy way to, to do it because when we have different versions of the kernel, uh, a lot of things on the kconfig, uh, a lot of configurations and options uh, change, right? Okay, more tips, clean. Clean is uh, uh, important uh, because when we are changing the dev config, for example, when we are changing the dot config, uh, I recommend you to make a clean or make a dist clean if you are changing the, the WSL, the, not the WSL, the dot uh, config from the kernel or the dev config of your uh, repository, right? Uh, to make a, a clean build. If you are only changing the driver or some module that we are uh, developing, the, the clean is not needed, but uh, when we change the dot config, the clean is recommended, right? Output, when we are um, building our kernel, we can pass the uh, O option, right? Let me show here, I have this, I use this way here, oh my development, I have here the artifacts uh, folder, and I have here the WSL, from downstream to WSL custom, that is my mainstream uh, build, and to WSL2 stable, that is the stable version of the kernel Linux. So I don't uh, make inside uh, the repository, right? I, I, I make it, but pa passing this folder, this artifacts folder, for example, WSL2 custom, right? Let's menu config. I will make the menu config passing uh, the artifact folders and the WS, uh, the, the dot config file is inside the artifacts folder, right? This is good if we need to uh, build different versions of the kernel, right? You don't need to clean uh, every time that we want to uh, build a new uh, or a different um, kernel version, right? Uh, with this output tip, right? You can maintain different versions in different artifacts folders and develop on these different versions. Uh, for modules, right? For the WSL, the WSL is very specific for the Hyper-V and for uh, the TWSL uh, needs. So everything is compiled as built-in. All the modules are compiled and are linked inside uh, TVM Linux and the BZ image uh, file, right? But if you want to, you can also on the config select some modules to build as, uh, as model, right? So we can make uh, you 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 have to compile it everything and also make the models and make the models install right to install the, the models on your distro right. Uh, another cool uh, tip about the models is uh, sometimes developers uh, deliver uh, Git repositories only with the source code uh, for a model without uh, out the kernel uh, source tree right. In, in these cases, we need the readers for uh, the version of the kernel. So we can make install the headers, right? We can make headers install. The install uh, path here uh, is uh, only if you want to install in another place or if, you, if your distro have uh, another place for the headers, right? But this is not needed 
uh, for us oh, on, on Ubuntu or in Debian, this is not needed, right? But here's only to remember you that you have this option, right? So you can make install, make readers install in this, install all your readers, and you can go through uh, a repository that have all only the source code for a model and make uh, only the model that because uh, we have the headers installed, right? You don't need out the source code of, of the kernel. So go ahead, uh, the bug tips. Okay, now let's see some uh, the bug tips, right? When we are developing for uh, the kernel, one uh, on driver or some modeling, and this is crashing or we have some behavior that is not expected, um, we need a uh, debug, right? Or, or see what, or try to see what is happening uh, and, and trace uh, the issue. And in, in the command line of the Linux, we have a lot of good parameters, good uh, options to help us with uh, the debug, right? So I recommend you to enter on the documentation of the kernel, right? On the kernel parameters, right? And you can see all the options that we have for the uh, command lines, right? And for example, we have the init call debug, right? This is cool because this will trace and it calls as they are executed, right? Useful for working out where the kernel is dying during the startup, right? We have some model, we will compile some model where you are uh, developing some model and uh, I need to see why this is not open or this is crashing my system. We can put this on the command line uh, to help to see where is the issue, right? So here on the WSL, on the dot WSL config, we have the parameter kernel command line. I I have it already uh, done here. Oops, let me put here. And we uh, and I put here, I append here on the command line. This this property is appending this. Uh, parameters on the command line of the WSL kernel, right? So I append here to ignore, to ignore log level. So, okay, so this will show us all the logs, right? Because uh, the common is the log level four, if I'm not mistaken. But with the ignore log level, this will show all the log levels, right? And in it call debug to us to show uh, the init call traces, right? But I'm mistaken here. Let me show first the mask without the, the command lines, right? The mask is a very powerful tool to uh, check the kernel logs, right? When we have here, we uh, execute the mask, this will print for us out the kernel, out the kernel space, at the print k uh, uh, prints, right? And we have, uh, onto the mask, we, we can also filter by level, right? Let me show the help here to the mask. And we have all these levels of, uh, of the messages. Let's filter by error, right? So I have these errors happening on my WSL. And if I have some bug behavior, I can uh, go through that mask and check this. This is a, a, a good tip if you are in, uh, if you find some issue and go here to the issues of the repository uh, on the downstream repository is uh, is good. You post your mask when we open a new ticket, a new issue here because this will help a lot uh, the people. Uh, the, the community to help you back uh, with uh, the traces and to and try to debug uh, the issue, right? So I uh, I show you the mask without the command line, right? We can see the command line here by get proc 
command line. It's only this. This is the fault that comes from uh, the, the WSL init, right? And now I will shut down here to WSL and will pass my kernel uh, command line here. This will append the properties, the parameters uh, for us. Let's execute again here my distro. Okay, let's see here the command line. And now we have the ignore log level and also the need call debug. And now if I execute the mask, you can see that I have a lot of prints here uh, for each the init call debug for each uh, model. This will print here the init call. Okay, we have the init from the model, uh, the init uh, function uh, from the model, uh, and also the return. This is very uh, cool because if we have a return diff that differs from zero, we have an issue, we have a problem on this model, right? So we can trace and check uh, or uh, see the issue that's happened in a specific uh, model, right? Okay, let's, uh, next tip. Oh, when we have a crash, uh, a photo crash, right? When we have uh, a panic, for example, uh, the mask will not help you, right? Let me show here. I have it. I have another demo here. From where? Ah, you know. Let me let me remember here. Oh, the, the path. I use Uno here because. Uh, I think we will have Jerome uh, talking about Uno also, but I will, I will make a, a demo only to showing this this running right. Because uh, in case here I'm I have this demo uh, for an embedded system right. Uh, this demo is to run on an embedded system using the Uno the, the, the Uno user interface, but I am. Uh, making some interactions in GPIOs, right? In the harder uh, pins, right? So I wrote here on my WSL a virtual uh, pin control driver, a virtual GPIO driver, right? And I'm using it here. Uh, let me let me show here in another tab. WSL data. Let me show you guys. Here, I have the GPIO detect from the GPIO tools, and you can see here that I have four GPIO banks. Uh, that is my pin control Hyper-V, my virtual GPIOs, right? Let me show here the Damask because I want to show you guys uh, the interaction, right? So I here I have the Uno platform running. Uh, the, JTK, the JTK running on Linux, right? I'm using the X server here uh, to show the window. And here uh, I'm using the .NET IoT libraries to uh, make the calls on the kernel Linux. You can see here, uh, here is the kernel space. Um, I put on my Hyper-V GPIO virtual driver some prints to uh, see here the chains on the pin, right? Right now, the LEDs are blinking, right? You can see the output changing the value of the pin, right? But also, I put a yester egg on my driver. If I try to output and change the value of uh, the pin 22, this will crash my system. I put a kernel panic if I try to uh, uh, output a value on the pin 22. You can see here, I'm back on the uh, power shelf, right? The system is crashed. And as you can see here, I'm in the dev as running, right? But I'm not seeing the kernel panic messages here because when we have a kernel panic a crash, a photo crash, on the WSL and the Hyper-V, this uh, will terminate everything and will make a, um, 
uh, emergency uh, shutdown and we do not have time to see uh, the output here. So for this, we can go to the event viewer of the Windows, right? Let me show you. Sorry for uh, the, the fonts, is a bit tiny, I know. But you can go here to the event viewer, applications and service logs, go to Microsoft, go to Windows, and here we will have the Hyper-V Worker here, this guy. The Hyper-V Worker, whoa. And inside the Hyper-V Worker, we have the admin, right? And the first uh, entry from the admin is a critical, right? When we have a kernel panic in Hyper-V in the, uh, the WSL, a, a kernel panic, for example, uh, we can get the stack trace or the trace, the dump of the, the kernel uh, logs on the event viewer. You can see here, uh, we have the messages. Uh, I put here on the Easter egg also, I don't know if you guys are uh, seeing, but I, I wrote here WSL conf, this is a bug. And here we have all the stack, right? Where is uh, the bug, uh, the line, and the C uh, file from uh, the bug? And we can check uh, where the bug happens, right? Okay, let's, I, I'm finishing. I'm okay. finishing. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to get this, uh, these logs is by KZEC or KDump also, but to be honest, I never tried it on the WSL, right? So, but it, this is a subject for other talk, maybe. And if you want to go deep on the Hyper-V and WSL, how the things happens behind the scenes, I recommend you to uh, read the hypervisor specifications, right? Uh, I, I, I like to say that Datasheet is the best friend of the kernel developer. And also we have a Datasheet for Hyper-V, uh, from Microsoft, we can download the PDF and see how the Hyper-V codes and how it works and everything. This will uh, help a lot uh, to you understand how uh, the hypervisor works, how the Windows and Linux are running inside the hypervisor and it is set. I think is it. Thank you so much, Matthias. This has been amazing. Um, Great, you've got your socials up there, Micro Hobby. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, it's really good. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Harden, bye-bye.